A while ago, I was thinking of going on a rail tour because there was a particular engine I liked hauling it. And then someone made a really good point. What's the point of being hauled by a certain engine when realistically you're not going to see it when you're on the way? Surely it's important the coaches are nice. And that's a good point. Granted, we come to the railway to look at engines, but at the same time, it's the coaches we're riding in. So let's look at what it takes to make a coach, or more specifically, a bullied coach. Welcome to Ropley Carriage Workshop, where we undertake restoration of carriages and other rolling stock. Currently at the moment, there's not much work going on on restoring coaches, but I thought this would be a perfect time to talk to one of the hardworking team here to look at what goes into making a coach, or more specifically, a bullied coach. Ali Steele is one of a talented team dedicated to carriage restoration. After starting as an apprentice eight years ago, he has worked on a number of restoration projects and today is going to show me just what a carriage looks like before and after the team have worked their magic. So Ali, what are we looking at here? This is Bullied Semi-Open Brake 3rd, number 4367, built in January 1948, I believe, and it's the third of our Bullied carriages here at the Watercrest Line. It's the second carriage involved in the Canadian Pacific project, and the next one on our hit list, so it's the next one we're going to be working on. Under frame of bogies have been done, the next task is to uh, restore the framework and then we'll get into things like the outer cladding, the roof, uh, re-canvassing and nice varnished woodwork on the inside and seats and things like that. Sounds like quite a challenge. I think it will be, but we can do it. Would you like to see inside? I would love to see inside. Wow, this is very different to what I'm used to seeing. So where are we at the moment in the coach? Well, right now I'm in the uh, small guards compartment and you're in the gangway through the luggage section of the carriage. Um, obviously we've got a, a, a very temporary floor in here. Um, and then moving up, we've got the timber frame work is on show, which is a bit of a signature of the bullied coaches. They were the final generation of wooden bodied vehicles built for the British Railways. Um, everybody thinks of bullied as the, the great moderniser, but here he is still using timber. It's fairly simple construction, just lapped together. Um, you can see all the, the jointing everywhere we got the timber crossing. It's curved timbers, which are quite funky to make. And then we go up into the roof which is just tongue and groove boarding really you've got a bit of a metal structure going across to help support it but really it's all timber you can see where fittings used to be we got we got a ventilator here we got a x light fitting would have been up there with the uh, the, the electricity trunking all a bit manky though needs a bit of work wonderful shall we have an explore and see what else is there i think it'd be rude not to oh, definitely. after you oh, thank you so much So Ali, the last place we looked at was the guards compartment, so I'm assuming this must be a passenger compartment. Yeah, this is an open saloon. We've got eight bays of seating, under, one underneath each window. Uh, starting from the bottom, we've got the uh, steam heating pipes, or remains of, that used to loop up underneath each seat. Working out from that, we got the remains of the seats, uh, that the cushions used to rest on these wings here, and then the backs get up to about that sort of height, and then we will have a nice varnished panel up here, a mirror, uh, luggage racks running along the uh, top rail of the framework there. If we look at the window uh, openings over on this side of the carriage, you can see the openings for the top sliding top lights up there. They're an aluminium subframe which goes in there and opens up so you can get a bit more ventilation in on a, on a nice hot day like this. Of course it's a bit windier now, isn't it? A little bit drafty, yeah. So what's the kind of next stage, especially with water, wood, from my experience, it kind of bows and softens and stuff. That's probably not ideal for something like this. So what do you do? Well, first of all, we, we make the frameworks out of really nice hardwoods, which are pretty stable anyway. We make sure they're all painted up. And then the external waterproofing is, of course, steel cladding for the outside. Uh, and then the roof, we put a canvas roof on it which we bed down 
using a linseed oil based compound and then we shove a whole load of paint on it. I think we painted the last roof something like 12 times just to keep the water out as much as possible. Wow, so what is this going to look like when it's finished? Well, funnily enough, we've just finished a carriage that is very, very similar to this. So why don't we go and have a look? Sounds wonderful. So Ali, you mentioned the Canadian Pacific project earlier. Isn't that just about the locomotive? No, it, uh, it has the Merchant Navy class locomotive, but also the two carriages that we're working on, both also designed by Oliver Bullied, but also a lot of outreach and interpretation, such as this viewing gallery that we're currently stood in, in the carriage workshop. So I can imagine once you guys are finished, it's gonna look spectacular with a full wake of Bullied coaches. Yes, it's gonna look really great. Uh, we've already had a bit of a taster of it when we had four bullied coaches brought over from the Bluebell Railway, which gave us a really great look at what we're gonna have when we finish this project. Ali, thank you so much, and um, let's head down to Walsford. Yeah, brilliant, let's go take a look. So compared to 4367, which we've just seen up at Rockley, we're now down at Alsford in sister carriage 1456, which we've pretty much finished. There's a few detail things to left to go in. But as you can see, it's all varnished timber. We've got the seats in with the original style upholstery. We've got the decorative mirrors. We've got the carriage prints in here. We've really gone to town with this. The only things that are left to do, uh, we've got to put tables in, we've got luggage racks to put in, and we've spent thousands of pounds getting new brackets made and chromed up, so it's all gonna be looking really nice and really bling. Here we are in the guards compartment, brake end of Bully Brake 4211, so it's very similar to 4367, which we saw up at Rockley. Um, you can see we've got the, the, the walls all clad, we've got the ceilings in, and we've got the guards compartment. So let's have a look in there. About where I was stood in 4367 is the brake column, uh, the hand brake, and we've also got the uh, periscope over here, so we can look along the train, along the roof. Um, we've got mirror up here, another mirror up there, so we can look along the top of the train. So here we are in the central section of 4211. This actually used to be two compartments, or unusually a compartment and a half, um, but it was uh, opened out when it was in departmental use, and we've used it as a wheelchair accessible compartment. And there you are guys, two beautiful coaches ready to enjoy, and more on the way. Bullied certainly pushed the boat out with some ideas, both with his coaches and locomotives. He pushed the double-decker train for the Southern Railway, which did increase capacity, but also increased wait time at stations, so didn't really take off. He also pushed the tavern car. Now, if you haven't heard of this, look it up online. It's amazing and sort of baffling at the same time, because it is literally a pub on wheels. It looks like a pub, even down to brickwork panelling or to look like it anyway. Inside was your country pub. Now, it didn't really last, even though some of you may be thinking that's a brilliant idea, myself included. But yeah, it didn't last because people kept missing their stops because the windows were either too small or they spent too much time at the pub. But we've got some fantastic coaches to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And thank you to Ali, who's been guiding me along the way and also helped present because frankly I don't know much about coaches and it's wonderful to have a wealth of expertise and knowledge here so thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time for another episode of things you now know